Hey everybody, welcome back to more quadratic functions. They are lots of fun, especially when we involve this guy, the quadratic formula, okay? Um, so just real briefly, why do we have to use this? What is this and, and why do we use it? So there are times when we, when we go to solve a quadratic equation, right? What we've learned so far is how we solve a quadratic with factoring, okay? And there are times when a quadratic doesn't factor, okay? Um, so, so in that case, when they don't factor, we have to find a different way, right? Use an alternate strategy to solve a quadratic equation, okay? And again, we couldn't just take this real nicely and solve it for x, right? It's the same way we would solve like a normal linear equation, right? If like just getting the x by itself, that wouldn't quite work. So we have to have all these alternate strategies to be able to solve, and quadratic formula is almost like our last resort, okay? But we do have to learn how to use it here in Algebra 2, okay? You actually learned it in Algebra 1, but so this is more of a refresher, but um, we're still going over it here. So if you look at a problem like number 1, okay, what it should say is solve the equation for x using the quadratic formula. So there we go. Um, oftentimes you will be instructed to use the quadratic formula just to make sure that you know how to use this guy, okay? So just look, before we get into that, looking at the actual formula itself, you notice, right, we're solving for the x answer, okay? And you notice this big crazy fraction, okay? How we do that, right? You see the letters that are in here, b, a, and c, or a, b, c, right? And what are those from? Well, those are from, right, our three coefficients within my uh, equation here, right? I have three different values in here in this quadratic equation, and so I'm gonna use those three values to plug into the quadratic formula, okay? And so my a value would be 3, my b value would be negative 2, and my c value would be negative 16. Okay, and it can be helpful to just jot those down because it can be easy to miss a sign or whatever in there. Okay, so I'm going to take these values and I'm going to substitute them into the quadratic formula um, exactly how it shows there. Okay, so if I do that, x equals, so that first thing is the opposite of b or negative b, right? But if b is already negative, I put a positive there, right? Because it's the opposite of B. So if it's negative, you make a positive. So two, and then this plus or minus, I'll talk about what that means after I plug everything in, okay? Plus or minus, this big square root of B squared. So again, my B value is negative two. So negative two squared minus four times the A value times the C value. So minus four times the A number, which is three times the c number, which is negative 16. And so that's all in the square root. And then look, it's all divided by 2 times a. It's all divided by 2a, and instead of writing a, I can actually write the a value, which is again, okay. So that is my quadratic formula with all these values substituted in. Okay, now obviously we have a lot of simplifying to do. And so I'm gonna take care of what's in the radical first, because if I think of my order of operations, right, Kind of this is considered a group or it or like within parentheses almost and i would hit, simplify this whole thing in here before i do anything else okay i can do this two times three on the bottom because that's easy and it doesn't affect anything else but yeah take care of what's in there first all right so two plus or minus the square root of two negative two squared would be four and then four times three is 12 and then 12 times negative 16, okay, so 12 times negative 16 would be 192, okay, but uh, yeah, if you think of this as negative 4, and then the negative 16 there, this actually turns into plus, so you could think negative 4 times 3 times negative 16 all ends up being 192, okay, and then that's all divided by 2 times 3, which is 6, okay, so I just simplified what's in here a little bit, and then again, I can add those two in there, so 2 plus or minus the square root of 4 plus 192 is 196 over 6, okay? And then keep on going, okay? So what's the square root of 196, or what times itself equals 196? Well, that's nice because it's a perfect square, right? Square root of 196 would be 14, okay? So x equals 2 plus or minus 14 over 6. Okay, now at this point, we have simplified the square root. We've simplified it all the way down, okay? Now, this plus or minus, what's the deal there, right? That's not some, like, special operation, right? 
you might remember with quadratics when we factored, right, we got two different answers, okay? And oftentimes with quadratics, you will get two different answers. Not every time, but most of the time, you will get two answers. So this plus or minus is kind of my way to account for both answers, okay? So at this point, when you've simplified it all the way down, you can break it up into two different fractions, okay? And so you do 2 plus 14 over 6, and then separately, 2 minus 14 over 6, okay? And those fractions, when I simplify them further, are going to give me two answers, okay? So if I do that, 2 plus 14 would be 16, and then I would get 16 over 6, and that's a fraction that doesn't quite reduce all the way, but I could reduce it to either 8 thirds, right, if I reduce the fraction, or as a decimal, that would be 2.67 or 2.6 repeating, okay? So that is one of my answers, x equals that, and then I simplify the other one, 2 minus 14 would be negative 12, and negative 12 over 6 would be negative 2, okay? And that does, that does reduce and divide, okay? So those are my two answers to this problem found by using the quadratic formula, okay? So I would get x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2.67, or again, that's 8 thirds. So again, that's a review of the quadratic formula, okay? Um, let's just quickly do one or two more that maybe won't reduce as nicely, unfortunately, um, and then that'll be it, okay? Okay, so we've got number two up here, okay? It says 3x squared minus 11x equals 5. Okay, now you might notice with this one that this does not have all the terms on that on the same side, right? And we need that for a quadratic formula. We need all the terms to be on the same side. Okay, so I want to get rid of this 5, and I'll just minus 5 from both sides. Okay, and that'll turn this right side into 0, and that's what I wanted to say. I wanted to say equals 0. Okay, so I just rewrite this, and this 5 isn't going to combine with either of these because these both have an x, right? So we'll just throw it on the end. 3x squared minus 11x minus 5 equals 0. Okay. Now that the x is by its, or now that it says equals 0, now I can plug in to the formula. Okay. So a equals 3, b equals negative 11, c equals negative 5. And I plug those values in to my quadratic formula, which I will do right now. There it is, right there. 11 plus or minus. The square root of negative 11 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 5, all divided by 2 times 3. Okay, so that's all plugged in. And now we simplify, right? So we would do x equals 11 plus or minus. Again, we take a negative 11 squared, and that ends up giving you positive 121. Okay, and then I do negative 4 times 3 times negative 5. So negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 times negative 5 gives you a positive 60. Okay, and then divided by 2 times 3 is 6. All right, keep on going. 11 plus or minus 121 plus 60 is 181 over 6. Okay, and at this point, okay, at this point, you look at this and you think, okay, square root of 181. Can you, well, that's not a perfect square, right? Uh, a whole number times itself does not equal 181, okay? And we would try, we could even try to do something called simplifying the radical, which means kind of breaking up 181, uh, but we're not able to do that here either. 181 can't really break up because it doesn't have any perfect square factors. I'll go over that later on, okay? And then 11 and 6, those can't reduce either. So basically, long story short, I prefer, a lot of the time when you're doing the quadratic formula, they prefer it to be in this form rather than as a decimal, okay? So if you wanted to break this up and do, and actually take the square root of 181, you'd get like 13 point something, and then you could do 11 plus 13 point something over six and get a decimal, and then do 11 minus 13 point something over six and get another decimal. So either way, though, um, sometimes it'll specify leave it in radical form or get an answer as a decimal. Um, but in this case, we're fine here, okay? So that's just walking you through. Again, sometimes these answers can be a little bit messy, um, but that is that, okay? We'll do one more with you, and then we're all good. All right, we've got number three up here, and we're going to solve this sucker out. 
and be done. Okay, so first thing you notice, again, where's your equal sign? Does it say equal zero? No, so we need to, usually you keep the x squared term over here and you just bring all the other terms over with it, okay? So I'm gonna minus four x, and in just all one step, I'm gonna plus this four. Okay, you can do it all in one step if you can keep track of it, okay? So everything is canceled over here. Now I have equals zero, and that's a good thing, that's what you want, okay? But all these terms here are gonna be on the right. So two x squared minus four x, keeping track of these signs, and then plus four. Now I want you to notice something, okay? It, you could take this and plug it right into the quadratic formula and still get an answer, okay? But something I want you to notice, hopefully you're well-trained enough at this to recognize two, four, four, these coefficients, they all have, they're all even, which is a giveaway that there's a GCF, right? Um, so if I divide everything by two, right? Two would be the GCF, okay? I'm able to do that and that's gonna reduce all these, okay? But if you remember what I said in the factoring video too, when we have a GCF, instead of writing it as like almost the reverse of distribution with the GCF outside and then your group, right? Instead, when I have an equation, right? I'm able to divide everything here by two and then divide this side by two. Cause that's the cool thing about zero, right? What's zero divided by two? Still zero. And you're even happier now because you just made your life a little bit easier because you made your group here smaller, okay? So if I divide all these by two, two x squared divided by two is just x squared. Negative four x divided by two is negative two x. And then four divided by two would be positive two. So again, not necessary that you do that, but it is good, it's helpful to you, it's advantageous because now you're gonna be plugging in smaller numbers in here and there's gonna be less for you to have to simplify later on. So let's do that. Let's, let's plug A equals one, B equals negative two, C equals positive two. Let's plug those into my quadratic formula. All right, so I substituted in all my values in here. Okay, and just like the other ones, we're gonna simplify this, okay? So X equals two, plus or minus the square root of negative two squared is four, minus four times one times two. That'd be minus eight over two times one is just two, okay? So I simplified that, okay, I keep going. X equals two plus or minus, four minus eight would be a negative four, okay, over two. Okay, now we get to this step and so many kids make mistakes. So many kids, and this is wrong, so don't do this, okay? So many kids take this and they do, okay, two plus or minus, square root of negative four is negative two over two, okay? No, no. That is wrong, okay, that's wrong, because the square root of negative four, again, so you'd be answering there, what multiple, what, what whole number times itself equals negative four? And if you answered negative two, you'd be saying, okay, negative two times negative two equals negative four. Not true, right? Negative two times negative two is positive four, okay? So that's not true, okay? So don't make that mistake. Don't make that mistake. All right, so what does that mean for this problem? What does that mean, okay? Unfortunately, like what happens sometimes with these problems, okay? When you have a negative in the radical right here, okay? When you get to this step, you see a negative in the radical. We are gonna learn later in Algebra 2 that we can deal with this, but we're not there yet, okay? So what we would say to this, similar to an answer we've said before, we would write no real solutions. If you just wrote no solution right now, I would be fine with it, okay? Because we haven't learned. We are, we do have some numbers that are not real, okay? And we'll get there later. But no solution, basically, is, is the answer here. Because, yeah, neg square root of negative four, you can't do that. You can't have the square root of a negative, okay? So no real solutions when this happens, okay? So that's, that's this is one of our special ones, okay? And it would be true even if we didn't factor out this, this two from the beginning. Okay, so okay, so there's a little bit on quadratic formula, a different way of solving our quadratic equations. I hope that makes sense. Thanks for following.